God for this wonderful time to be in worship. Let us pray. Our Father, you are you are holy. We give you glory today and we bless your holy and righteous name. Father, we pray that you would bless our time together in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. morning and shalom. shalom our morning text comes from the gospel of Matthew chapter 26 verses 26 through 30 I will be reading from the New International Version while they were eating Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that it is true. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Good morning, and praise the Lord. Our hymn of worship today is the blood will never lose its power. We're going to be un 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 unorthodox today and we're going to start at the chorus and then do the first two verses and go back to the chorus. Amen. Amen. Here we go, y'all. It reaches. It reaches. Sing it good. That she, that she shed, shed for me. For me. Thank you, Jesus. And he did it way back on Calvary. Come on, y'all. Way back, way back, way back. Way back on Calvary. Calvary. Oh, yes, the blood.
temple today for the blood of Jesus that covers us and keeps us. Amen. What a powerful hymn to move us to our prayer period. Amen. We are we are covered. We are covered. Yes, yes, yes. Family, as always, we're so mindful of all of the prayer concerns that you you emailed in and you texted in and you called in uh, to the church. And we're grateful again for all of our leaders, our prayer team and deacon ministry that are faithful and diligent in interceding on behalf of all of your concerns throughout the entire week. We certainly want to lift some of our family members who have lost loved ones that we are made aware of. Donna Edwards, who funeralized her, her mother, Doris Tony. Eric Phillips, in the passing of his father, his father, Mr. Willie Phillips. Then we're praying with Dalen Brock and family in the passing of his mother, Mary Brock. As always, we lift up our pastor, his entire family, of course, the entire Shalom Church family, and all of you who are sharing with us on today. Amen. Lastly, before we uh, move forward, we certainly want to appeal to you, if you are watching today and you do not know Jesus Christ in the parting of your sins, we pray that after the proclamation of the gospel, you will be convicted in your heart and you would accept Jesus Christ into your life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall have a personal relationship with God the creator through his son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for you and I. Additionally, if you are watching today and you know Jesus Christ, but you don't have a church home where you can be nurtured, where you are covered uh, in the word of God. Well, under the direction of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark, we would love to nurture you in the faith. Our information is on the screen right now, and it'll be again at the end of the service. We would love for you to call us that we can minister and celebrate with you as we walk together and grow together in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our choir is going to lead us in song, after which Minister Preston Williams will come and lead us in prayer. It's a song you can help us sing. He keeps on making a way for me. Yes, he does. Do I got a witness out there? Yes. Come on, if you know that he keeps on making a way for you, just wave your hands and help us sing this song. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood because he keeps making a way. Listen, it says this. He keeps on making a way for me. The doors are open, now I'm able to see. I can truly say hey, that the Lord has made a way. Oh, he keeps on making a way for me. Come on, let's sing it together. He keeps on making a way for me. The doors are open. Together, he keeps on making a way. He keeps on making a way for me. The doors are open. Now I'm able to see. I can truly say that the Lord has made a way. He keeps on making a way. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we love and adore you on this morning. We acknowledge you afresh as our creator. You are our savior and you are our keeper. God, we thank you for your presence on today and we thank you for the many ways that you've made and the many doors that you have opened. 
God, as we look back over this week, we thank you that morning by morning, new mercies we see. We can see, oh God, that you've been keeping us, that you've been watching over us from danger seen and unseen. God, we thank you that it's not been because we've been so kind, not because we've kept your commandments so close, but in your grace and in your mercy, oh God, you've made a way for our forgiveness. We thank you for being the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. We thank you for your broken body and your shed blood. So we confess in your presence that yes, we have sinned. We've missed the mark. We've fallen short of your glory. But we thank you for making a way that we would again experience salvation through the death of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that even now we have the resurrection power. The greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So whatever we're facing on this morning, Lord, we pause right now. We cast our cares at your feet because your word says that you care for us. Father God, for families who are in bereavement, we thank you, oh God, that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy comes in the morning. We thank you that earth has no sorrow, that you're not able to heal. And so we pray that you would minister to families who are broken, minister to families who need a touch from you on this morning. Father, we need you and we cannot make it without you. For loved ones who are sick and afflicted, oh God, we thank you that your word is true, that by your stripes we are healed. And so we thank you and we plead the blood of Jesus that no weapon formed against us would prosper. And then, Father God, for your preached word that's coming forward, we thank you for your son, your servant, your instrument, Dr. Clark. We simply pray you would continue to anoint him afresh. Then anoint us that we would have ears to hear, that we would be hearers of your word. But not just hearers, but doers as well. Blessings upon his family. Blessings upon the entire church family, God. And we thank you that at the end of your word, if anyone does not know you, we simply pray that they would come to know you as the personal Lord and Savior that you are. We love you so much. We thank you for hearing our prayer. Focus our faith, we pray. Deepen our trust in you. And we'll be mindful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you for keep on making a way. Amen and bless God. Amen. Come on, sing it like your testimony. He keeps on making. He keeps on making a way for me. Just clap your hands right there where it holds. Now I'm, now I'm to see. I can't truly say, I can't truly say that the Lord, that the Lord has made a way. Come on, say right there. He keeps on, he keeps on making a way for me. Come on, put your hands on it and say, He keeps on making a way. He keeps on making a way.
Yes. Yes, sir.
grateful again to have this opportunity to share with you in this uh, marvelous worship experience God's blessings upon you and your entire household I'd like to invite your attention uh, this morning to Hebrews 10 verses 11 to 18 of Hebrews 10. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since that time he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, that sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I certainly solicit your prayers on today. This is our communion Sunday as well. Thank God for the uh, music that has been a blessing in our hearing today. I lift this theme to God our preaching Jesus the perfect sacrifice. Jesus the perfect sacrifice the epistle to the Hebrews does not mention the name of its author although some believe it to be Paul however modern biblical scholarship consider its author unknown uh, there is not in this epistle the usual greetings and salutations addressed to the community, but instead a reminder of God's historical presence with the forefathers through the prophets at various times. Now the major emphasis is upon the person of Christ and his role as a mediator between God and humanity. In the face of persecution, there were some Christians who were considering turning back to Judaism or to a system of law. But with Jesus, the system of grace had been instituted with his death on the cross, uh, and this is once and for all. But these verses that were read literally inform us that Jesus paid it all. And with the same uh, repetition 
found in the text, I just like to say that again because it bears repeating. The text is teaching us that with the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross, he, he paid our sin debt, that Jesus paid it all. We are fortunate enough to have that as one of the hymns of the church, but it's more than a song. It's an actual activity performed in and through Jesus paying our sin debt. Now, some of us have experienced sitting in a restaurant waiting on your server to bring you your bill only for them to tell you that your bill has been paid for. And I'm here to testify what a wonderful temporary experience to be enjoyed for that moment. But what Jesus did was one act at one time for all times. That, that, that uh, be encouraged today that your bill has been paid. Uh, now, 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 and it is not my hope to be before you long on today, but I hope that uh, what is presented in preaching today will be a blessing to you. It would bring you to a closer and better understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so let's look at how Hebrews captures this long history of priestly activity in the verses that we have read. And I pray that these verses remain before you. Verse 11 says, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. Uh, so we have this, this constant uh, act of religious duties. Day after day, again and again, offering the same sacrifice. Uh, so, brothers and sisters, the the work of the priests in this particular capacity is never finished. And when you look at uh, uh, the verse, you see that his form is one of standing. And the results is always incomplete. Um, and so verse 12 reads, but when this priest had offered for all times one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time he waits for his enemies to become his footstool. So this priest in verse 12 refers, brothers and sisters, to Jesus who offers for all one time, one sacrifice for sins. And it's important to note that when he finishes, he sits down at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. That he sits down at the right hand of God because he's finished. Uh, that he himself said these words from the cross in John 19 and 30, that it is finished, that the work of Jesus on the cross is completely finished. So, so I, I want you if, you, if you're writing today, uh, that he's not just finished, but, but I need for you to hold on to this, that he is completely finished. Hallelujah, that when the enemy starts to bother you and goes out of his way to uh, try to move you toward having a bad day, we, we need to remember that Jesus paid it all. 
and that his work is not just finished, but completely finished. Hallelujah. Those of you at home that's looking in, I need for you to just say that with me one time. His work is completely finished. Hallelujah. That the priestly functions of the others, don't miss this, is day after day. Again and again. The same sacrifices that does not take away sins. Uh, it's just a, a constant act of doing the same thing uh, that will bring about the same results. In our culture, one of the definitions for insanity is doing the same thing over and over again looking for different results. God does not fit into that category uh, because he settles everything through his son Jesus Christ. While one stands, Jesus sits, symbolizing that the atoning work has been completely accomplished. I need that to embrace your spirit today, that there is no more goats needed for sacrifice, no more bulls needed for sacrifice, no more pigeons needed for sacrifice, that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yeah, that he is the Savior and the Shepherd. He is the prophet, priest, and king. He is the emancipator, liberator, justifier, purifier, and redeemer. That he is all sufficient, isn't he? Yeah, that, that he puts everything right for us in our relationship with the Father. I praise him today for his work on the cross. Now, verse 14 says, um, for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Now, I just need two minutes to try to unpack that that for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy that the that the finished work of Jesus on the cross brothers and sisters gives us a right position so those persons who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior uh, our, pos our position as sinners in his presence has changed. That, that since our position is right, we are made perfect forever before him. Hallelujah. Uh, however, our walk with God uh, still needs to move in the area of maturity. That, 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 that our position is right, but our principles of living need to be guided yet by the Holy Spirit. And so, and so what we're saying that we are, we are saved while we are also being saved. That, that every day we uh, confess that we are work in progress, that my, that my position is right with him, but, but as I move toward him, in my lifestyle, there's some things that he still needs to work on. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that I, am, I am being sanctified. I'm sanctified, but each day I'm being made more sanctified. Hallelujah. That I'm, I'm, not, I'm not what I used to be. But I thank God, hallelujah, that he has brought me this far. And, and I can truly say what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. And so my position is right. And so I praise him on today that I'm in the right position with him. And, and please be patient with me because the Lord is not through with me yet. That I'm, I'm still growing, I'm continuing to grow. 
and as I am experiencing certain difficulties, I'm really being made perfect by the work of the Holy Spirit that's growing in my life. Hallelujah. That's enough for us all to get happy right about now. That I, I'm almost finished. That there are, there are so many features that accompany the transition uh, to the new covenant. Uh, one such gracious blessing was that in Luke 23, 45 that in Luke 23, 45, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. Hallelujah. Uh, that in the Jewish temple, brothers and sisters, the, the veil served as the barrier uh, of the holies of holies. Only the high priest could enter into this area and only one time a year to make atonement for the sins of Israel. However, with the death of Jesus on the cross, there's no need for a high priest. That Jesus is our high priest now. And he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. Hallelujah, which means that you can go to God for yourself on the day that, that, that we have. We have in our church uh, our health ministry and they've had first aid seminars and, and the seminars was teaching lay people how to handle some emergencies that dealt with health measures. Uh, and that if something would happen to people uh, uh, and they would call 911 and 911 would be delayed and when you're in emer an emergency, everything seems like it's prolonged. Uh, but, but, but because of your teaching, you could take matters into your own hands until the professionals arrived. That there, that there is some things that you could do to help out until uh, the uh, professional healthcare people came on the scene. That, that you could give mouth to mouth resuscitation or, or you could press the heart uh, to, to keep to see if you could get a pulse or press the heart to get the heart regulated again. And you would do that until. So, even spiritually speaking, that, that there are times when uh, God has assigned you a certain leader, but because that leader, he or she, is caught up in time, they would have to go through certain things to get where you are because they are not omnipotent and they are not omnipresent. Uh, but be that as it may, when you know they're on the way, because God has rented the temple in two, uh, if they don't get there at all, you are still in good shape. Because God has made provisions that you can be your own high priest, that you can enter in uh, to the holies of holies and, and we don't call it the holies of holies anymore. We call it our prayer closet. And uh, you don't need to wait to get to trouble to get to your prayer closet. Yeah, every day there ought to be a visitation where you go into your personal holies of holies to have a little talk with him. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faith and cry. He'll answer by and by. Feel the little prayer will turn in. Now that the fire is burning and just have a little talk with Jesus and he'll make it all right. You ought to be glad that you can go to him. Hallelujah for yourself. I got one more thing and I'm and then we're going to move to the table. 
that verse 15 and following, you got to read this over. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit testifies about the covenant that is being made. Verse 16b says, and I'll put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Yeah, yeah. And so automatically, without even thinking about it, you go back to uh, Mount Sinai when the Ten Commandments were given on stone. In fact, in fact, the, the stone was put in the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was placed in the Holies of Holies. Uh, but this time, as God moves through his son, yeah, and the Holy Spirit will be given as a guide, God says, I'm going to remix my work. And in my remix, I'm not going to put it on stone. I'm going to etch it in their hearts. And I'm going to put it on their minds. Hallelujah. So if they go to the left, or if they stray to the right, yeah, my word will be deposited in their hearts. Hallelujah. You got to love that. Which, which is working out a certain perfection in every believer because the word of God is in our hearts and in our minds. It's something when you hear the word of God, you don't even know it's working on you. You, you have no clue because you said I don't feel nothing as if this has to do with feelings. This has nothing to do with feelings, but God is doing something. And you'll be way down the road before you figure out exactly what God is doing. There's something else here. And then he adds, their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. And I, and I need for you to be clear about this. Uh, that uh, God not remembering our sins does not mean that God is forgetful. No, that's not what he's saying. No, that because of our being in the right position, uh, because of his son, that uh, whatever the sins were, God has made a righteous decision to honor his son that has honored your life. And when you're under the covering, the blood covering of the son, then God the father is pleased with the son. And uh, if you're with the son, then God won't see your sins anymore. In fact, nobody can even bring it up. So, so whatever it is that's been keeping you at a distance from God, you got to understand when you're right with Jesus, yeah, you're right with God because God honors his son, Jesus, and has decided that I won't remember your sins no more. In fact, I won't even bring it up that, that if a prosecuting attorney is pressing on the witness that if the witness says I don't remember uh, then you can rest assured you don't have a case because the witness does not remember and when it comes to God when he says I do not remember God does not have to worry about purging himself because it matters not who tries to bring up your transgressions God will not remember. I got to get out of your way, but uh, everybody in here and everybody that's watching, that ought to make you feel just a little bit better that God has forgiven me of my sins. Hallelujah. And he's made a decision. Hallelujah. To uh, let me live a sanctified life. Hallelujah, that I'm saved, sanctified, on my way every day 
to being more saved and more sanctified. Hallelujah. And when that happens, there is no priestly sacrifice other than the sacrifice of Jesus that will ever be necessary. I'm done. May the Lord bless you. May God keep you. Is my prayer. But you thought I was worth saving. So you came into my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleansed me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrifice your life. So I can be free. So I can be whole. So I can tell everyone I know that the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood hallelujah that give me strength from day to day it will never I said it will never it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley or the blood I'm talking about the blood that was shed for me way out on Calvary it will never uh, uh, never lose its power if you're not too mean and you're not ashamed wherever you are in your home or sitting somewhere in this building you ought to open up your mouth throw back your head and tell the Lord thank you for being a keeper thank you for waking us up this morning thank you for your health and strength is it anybody here no my Jesus is it anybody here have you have you tried my Jesus if you tried him you gotta know he's all right I gotta quit now I gotta quit now I gotta quit now but Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin has left a crimson stain but he washed said he washed he washed he he washed as white as snow I'm trying my best to get out of your way but the more I talk about this Jesus the more I want to talk about this Jesus hallelujah he's all right I said he's all right he's all right perfect sacrifice perfect sacrifice you don't have to live in guilt no 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 and many times it's not the sin that lingers it's the guilt of the sin that lingers gets all in our bones causes separation and causes you not to be in fellowship with others but when you look to Jesus who's the author and finisher of our faith and you accept his perfect work sacrificial work high priest work from the cross yeah I got a feeling when you accept it and you make it a part of your lifestyle that everything will be all right. May the Lord bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. But God is good and he's good all the time. I'm trying my best to move to the communion. But when I think about how good God has been, something starts to stir in me. It'll make me open up my mouth. It'll make me throw back my head and tell God, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. I want to thank him right now while the blood is running warm 
in my veins. being God all by your all by yourself I done messed around and got happy here thank you yeah for dying out on that tree thank you for being put in that borrowed tomb but early Yeah, a couple of years ago, I'd be laughing at preachers that uh, would pause and make noise like this. I'd be laughing at them. I was laughing because I hadn't lived long enough to know that that groaning is a form of speaking in, in a tongue. It can't be interpreted by the listeners. That's, that's at another place. Yeah, so sometimes when you can't find words, to really express how you feel if you just go to moaning the Holy Ghost yeah he, he's, he, he, he's, been, he's been crafted to, to interpret every tongue there's not a language that you have that the Holy Ghost can't interpret and, and sometimes I, I feel so good about what God has done CJ until good ain't strong enough of a word and I wish I had another word other than good and so if I can't find that in my spirit it's an I ain't I'm trusting that somehow the spirit can take that yeah, and since God is sitting at the right hand of the Father, that Jesus is able then to interpret exactly what I just said. I gotta go. I've been before you too long. May God bless. Didn't mean to go this far. Didn't mean to go this far. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, everything he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Communion Sunday. This is Communion Sunday. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not through, but I got to stop. But I'm not through. Yeah, I feel all right. Hallelujah. 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 So those of you at home, go get your cracker and your juice or your water, whatever it is that you're going to use for this element. And we are going to commune together. Now, we're still showing up here uh, doing curbside. We're still serving on the land here. And... Uh, so if you want to make your way, we'll be in place to make sure that we serve you as well. Yes, Lord. If I had a voice, I'd sing a song before we eat together, but I don't have, I don't have much of a voice. Yeah. 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 Give me something. Give me something. What is that? Yeah, yeah, all to hear my old. Sin and love. He was. Jesus 
was painted on oh, oh, to him I, I owe sin I had a voice I could I, I, I'd go on and sing that I'm gonna do the best I can with what I have is that all right Jesus paid it all oh, to him sin had left a crimson stain he he was she's why elements now. Everybody, even at home, you ought to be ready. Mm -hmm. The Savior said The strength indeed is small Watch and pray Find in thee My all And all Let's eat together Let's drink together and Let's praise God together Let's paint it on All to him I owe Sin Had left a Crimson stain he wash is white as snow. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, the only wise God our Father, be glory, dominion majesty and power both now and forever shalom i love you i love you i love you jesus painted Deacon Joyce McGrath, thank you for joining us for our live stream service. 
We are so glad that you have found time to uh, worship with us as we worship in spirit and in truth. Remember, we shall reap a harvest if we faint not. There are so many ways that we can stay connected during these times. We're so grateful for our live stream services and our pastor who worked so hard on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. And then we can stay connected to one another. Remember, we can pray for one another and we encourage you to stay healthy and to wash your hands, to wear your mask, and to stay socially distanced during these turbulent times. And again, Shalom, we want to be found guilty to be good stewards during this time. So continue to send in your tithes and offerings. So many ways to do that as well. You can give it online at our website, shalomccop.org. You can text in your tithes and offerings. You can mail your tithes and offerings. And finally, if you have any concerns, just call the church office at 314-653-2300. Remember, we are doing this for kingdom building. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth. God bless you and shalom. Shalom. Family, as we approach the holiday season, we invite you to worship with us on live stream Thanksgiving morning, 10 a.m. Feel free to reach out to your family and your friends and invite them to join us on that day. Once again, that's Thanksgiving morning, 10 a.m. Tune in and be blessed.